Okay, so today I've been asked to give you a little bit of a tour of uh, our van that we built uh, basically a year ago. A um, little unique, I think most of you will find that uh, there's a couple of challenges that we took on which we wanted to do differently. Um, first of all, this van, although we've built two, um, this uh, the other one is a Sprinter, this one is a Citroen, a uh, 3 litre, but this van is in South Africa and uh, it has changed some of the environment because most of you will know that South Africa is not a very safe place. So the first criteria and the main criteria of this van is to be completely stealth. Um, to show no places where you're taking in air, where, you, where you're doing ventilation, these kind of things. So that those of you who have built vans before will know that that's quite a challenge. The only place where you can see on this van uh, that there is something different going on is if you would get enough height and you would actually see the, 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 the solar panel, which at this moment I'm hoping you're not seeing because that was the idea. Apart from that, it's just a normal Citroen panel van or cargo van, as they call them in the United States. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit extra length one. It's not the normal. In the Sprinter, they have the normal, the, the XL, and then the Super XL. So this would be the same as the XL, which is the same that we have in Europe. Um, so that's kind of unique, but now some of the other criteria that we wanted, my wife and I are a little bit on in age to normal van dwellers. So there were a couple of criteria that we spoke about. Number one, we wanted a proper double bed, like a normal double bed that you would buy anywhere or hopefully even a queen, which we didn't achieve in this one, but I think it can be achieved if somebody wanted to. The second thing we wanted is we wanted to be super comfortable to sit, not sitting on the bed, but to have some kind of comfy chair to sit on uh, both for both of us and also if we wanted to do that in the van, whether we wanted the outside or inside. And then there's something unique that I haven't seen on too many vans uh, and I've watched a lot of van tours in different, you know, as you know, you're available on, on YouTube. Uh, we didn't believe that cooking indoors, especially within the South African scenario, that cooking indoors was actually a good idea. Uh, we believe that cooking outdoors is better. We did a little bit of my own research, or I made a little bit of research, and I realized that even people who have caravans uh, with kitchen indoors uh, tend to cook outdoors. Um, so we decided that that would cause a major difference in our van. Of course, we do also need to be able to cook or to, you know, to warm up the odd uh, uh, two-minute noodle or to do a coffee or something like that. So we have a different option for that to be used internally. So those were the kind of the main criteria that we had. Um, we also would like to have quite a lot of space. And then if we're in camping mode, which we call our camping mode in South Africa, would be actually being at the caravan park or being in one of the... Uh, uh, what you call them, the game parks, there you're actually camping as such. So there's a lot of awning that we wanted to have. We wanted to have awning in the front, wanted to have awning in the back. Uh, I'm not going to put up the awnings for this tour, but I'll give you an idea of how that runs. So let's start off with the van in what I call stealth mode. This means that this is where you would go park somewhere in the city. You would be in a parking lot like they do a lot in the United States, like at a Walmart. We don't have Walmarts, we have other shopping centers. In Europe, you, go, you would go and park at Kaufland or one of those. But basically, you're trying to get away with the fact that you are not seen. So this is our stealth mode, as you've seen it now from the outside. We actually have two entrances. We, we call it the back door and the front door. Um, because our van is in a sense cut out, you cut off, you can't walk from the front to the back. So first of all, um, I just want to say as well, I come out of a, a, a kitchen manufacturing background, so I got a couple of tools in which I could do a lot of my kitchen manufacturing, so you're going to see that this is like super white, but obviously you could do it with anything else that you wanted to. Okay, another another thing that we find a lot in in uh, in vans is that people want to have the swivel seat uh, to get the extra space and i get it uh, obviously that's very important to have the extra space but unfortunately if you want to keep it stealth you probably won't get away with it i'm talking about really being stealth so one of the important things for us was that if you look or if you would have a torch and you would come here at night and you shine into my van 
you would not be able to see that there is actually a door. It's the same carpeting which is behind the van. We built this completely ourselves. It's not part of the van. And everything is, is done in such a way that if you would come with a torch at night and look here, you wouldn't know whether there is actually a door, yes or no. Um, but there is a through fair. Our chairs do not swivel, but there is a through fair. Of course, I, I gained some other things that I didn't realize while I was building is that I've gained a big cavity behind uh, the, the, the passenger seat as well as a big cavity behind the driver's seat because um, let me just show you here uh, this is a velcroed piece that rolls up which is exactly the same color as the van so as you see it comes off very easily and uh, this of course then velcros back but then there's this extra which is here so that when you, all your lights are on inside the van even in the darkest of night, you cannot see a slither of light coming out of this van going to the outside so, so that it can remain stealth. This of course means that we've had to put LED lighting everywhere. Um, also got the inverter that works with the solar, which is all hidden. Now, let me speak to you about some of the features that this van has. First of all, I've already mentioned to you, as you see it here, you will not see the kitchen. There is no kitchen anywhere, but we have a full kitchen. Um, then these are of the obvious cupboards which are all the way around uh, we have a TV that hooks up here and that folds out all the way it can even fold right out of the door so you can view it from outside or inside and as you can see here's my full bed it's a little bit high and at the moment I'm still there's still a couple of things we're finishing with the van but at the moment I'm still building a step that folds out of here I don't want a, a step that slides out because once again you will see that it's not that it's a camper. So at the moment we're just using a little portable step. But the next thing would be to have a step that folds out a little bit here. So especially for my wife to get on the bed, um, she needs the little step. But that's the compromise for the moment. Okay, so what are the features? So we've got the full bed. Then for clothing, obviously we've got little cabinets that run all the way around, all the, all the way along there. And then we have um, these drawers that actually got locks on them, obviously for if you have a sudden breaking. And so you've got two huge drawers like this. At the moment the van's not packed to go anywhere, so there's nothing in them. But we would normally share one drawer for my wife, one drawer for myself. And then for shoes and things like that, it's a similar drawer. But then we'd have the same, one drawer, one drawer each. Or when we'll have one full drawer each, depending on... Uh, Kind of how we feel with each other at the time, whether we want to share drawers or not. Also, because, uh, and you might be wondering what that thing is down there. Uh, those of you who are van dwellers will know that that's going to be the toilet, obviously. So it's a chemical toilet, works for well for us. Um, so we've just got a cover over it, so it's not obvious. But because of that, I was able to put in a very nice drawer in which I put all my cameras, all these kind of things. Uh, for the actual trip as you can see all these drawers are super long 900 millimeters long and can hold a lot um, So that's basically the, the packing space we have for our clothes, etc. And this takes up I would say 40% of the bed underneath so all of that cavity is used There's another cavity behind the toilet, which you will see much later in the van tour now this wall is actually got a lot more than what it seems to have. Um, there are two 80 litre water containers behind the wall. Uh, sorry, two 40 litre. My cameraman just uh, adjusted things there. Uh, uh, two 40 litre containers behind the wall that have been built in. These are our super seats. They're really the king seats, the best you can buy in the market. That actually fold open, but I'm not going to go there now. I just want them out of the way for now. So behind this wall, you have these two major containers of water. Now, we don't have to actually reach them. I've only made a door here so that I can reach all my electrical connections and all my plug points that are going to the fridge. So I've got a 12 volt going to the battery. I've got 12 volt coming out the battery. I've got a uh, 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 full power electricity in South Africa. We use 250 volt, but 250 volt coming in through my inverter or coming from offshore. And then I've also got a distribution for my 250 volt in the whole van. This little door also opens up. These are two little interesting pipes, which I'll show you a little bit later. But as you can see here, 
this is where I see my level of my water in my tanks. Uh, obviously, I don't come here with a little a little uh, jug and and fill up these containers. These containers have actually got a, a sucking pipe. I can suck. Well, first of all, I can take pressure from outside and just connect it. Or I can even, if I wanted to, I could even suck from a river with another pipe and actually suck up the water into the tanks. So with this see-through pipe, I can see the levels. And it, it obviously it's made in such a way that if you should stop suddenly, the water doesn't come pouring out. Um, and then, of course, here's my charge controller where I can see what's going on. So basically, my water and my electricity is in a sense centralized here for operations. I'll show you later where the inverter is, where the batteries are, where the pumps are, etc, etc. So now it comes to, once again, living space. Um, as you can see, I'm moving these chairs around, but we chose these chairs in a very specific way that they can fit perfectly next to each other. We can sit in the van if it's raining, we can watch TV or we could sleep and watch TV. Or as you'll see just now, we can actually completely transform the van to have all the space that we could possibly have with the van. So we've got one little addition here. This is just a bit of cupboard space for tools, our vacuum cleaner, etc. Um, and then there's also our offshore connection, our water connection. And then as you can see, that blue tank is there. That means I can take another 25 liters of water if I wish, if I think I'm going into a situation where there's not much water. Cupboard space, this is just a little extra cupboard space here. At the moment we're keeping our toilet papers, etc. there, and uh, wet wipes. This is a little bit, uh, I've had to, to fix this up a little. It's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's not exactly the way I'd, I'd prefer it to be, but the hook didn't work that well. But this is actually a table. So this, uh, at, the, at this stage it looks like a mirror that you just use as a mirror, but then the table actually folds down and that mirror part becomes a foot. Now you might say to yourself, but there's very little space here. You'll understand later how this can transform into basically a, a, a little dining room. But just I just wanted to show you the table in the meantime. Obviously there's power here for if you're busy having a, a, a bit of dining with four people or whatever. So that's the, that's the extra table. There's another table. There's actually two more tables which are stored in the van. Um, but they is primarily made for using outside. All of these cupboards, of course, have got their little compartments where you can put different things. And we found that traveling quite a lot with a van, you need a little thing for, for, for medicines. You need a little thing for, you know, pesticides or whatever you want to use to keep rid of the mosquitoes. Also, that, that space, those of you who know the Sprinter and know these vans will know that there's a lot of space there in front. I'm using this space for all my tenting, for all my awnings, for my, well, some of my poles, you'll see later there's a specific place for the poles. I tend to keep some, some cleaning things, squeegees, long things that, items that have got long handles, etc, etc. Now, when you look at this off the cuff, it just looks like a bed with the sides. But in actual fact, I've made use of all the space here. On the side of the bed. I'll give you an idea. This is where one of the tables are. I'm probably going to be changing this to a compression, uh, a little compression thing so that it stays open. But this is a, a fold up table which then comes out and that you can use outside. Uh, it can go into high, you can have it as a countertop or you can have it as a kind of a coffee table size. There's also a lot of other space here, the whole length. These are all cupboards. This one is slightly different to this one. This one goes deeper and this one's uh, not as deep because I'm using the space from the back. And as I said, the TV unhooks. What is a little unusual from the South African scenario again is that as you can see or as you've probably figured, there's no windows in this van going out. You cannot, you cannot see the light from inside going out, but you also if you close, if I would close this van right now, which I'm not going to do to my cameraman, but if I would close the door right now and switch off the lights, you would not see. It would be like a dark room. You could literally use this van as a dark room in the old days when you used to do negatives. Well, some of you will know that. Others of you that are younger won't even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, so one of the things that are unique about this TV is that also I have four cameras outside the van which are giving me a, a quarter view, uh, you know, four, four screens here, 
which show me exactly what's going on outside of my van day or night because they're very uh, light sensitive cameras and in actual fact probably when you saw the first pictures of the van you would not have seen them my cameraman will give you a shot of that just now where you'll see it's just a small little camera on the dark strip and of course my back camera it looks like a second reverse camera so that doesn't really draw attention now before we leave here um, you need to try and imagine yourself in this van first of all uh, when I first built the van I thought I would have a lot of problems with ventilation so I experimented and I discovered that if you just in the wheel hubs if you put in what one would use for little air conditioner pipes or for ventilation pipes the, the little 110 millimeter that in actual fact if you put in the wheel hubs and you suck in air with even just a little 12 volt computer fan you have more than enough air in a van like this we've tested it in the winter we've tested it in the summer we've tested it for hours i have uh, uh, you won't see it now but there's a little uh, what do you call it carbon monoxide detector here it doesn't even give you a reading once you've slept in here for eight hours we do have a small problem with this van is that if we go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night and because it's very well insulated um, even if the sun is shining it can be 10 o'clock in the morning and we won't know that it's actually daytime yet um, so <laughs> you could call that a problem I like it because I can sleep late but that gives you an idea of how well insulated it is and like I say we can see out and we get quite a lot of ventilation uh, I am thinking of maybe trying to improve ventilation maybe a bit but I think we'll probably only do that the day we feel that we really some people feel that they think it's going to be claustrophobic we don't suffer from that so we haven't needed it and so I'm not going to build something in which will give away my stealth um, just for that but there is one thing that I still wanted to show you and that's in these cupboards before we move away and that is we call it our coffee station um, down here um, there's just a couple of things that we would use for outside barbecue etc there's nothing in there at the moment but then here is where we would keep our extra kettle and an electric kettle as I've said I've got 250 volts so if I'm hooked up to shore I can use my electric kettle but otherwise my little gas kettle um, this cupboard still needs a little bit of work on this one only opens when you'll see another mode that this bed can be in which I haven't revealed yet but then we've actually got a little coffee station here so we've got our coffee and normally our mugs would be here this is a little uh, probably fairly well known it's just a little gas so this works very well for early morning coffee you get up you have all set up you, you pull this table down uh, you can put your mugs here you can put your, your, your coffee there whatever and then obviously you warm up your water but this also works well for if it's raining and you need to cook a two middle noodle or something like that for my wife and I when we considered having the kitchen outside of the van so to speak we realized we needed the coffee station but we also talked through this thing of what if it's raining for a couple of days well we kind of decided that we're saving so much money we don't pay for any accommodation anywhere we normally eat with food that's coming from the grocery stores that we believed even if it was a week of rain we'd probably eat out and go to coffee shops I don't want to live in this van uh, for a week when it's raining so I probably we would use the van obviously as a sleeping place but then we would go to a coffee shop or we'd go to movies or whatever you can really spend money on that when you've saved so much that's kind of our philosophy as I've said there's cupboards all along there that one's not as deep so we tend to keep all our bedding there uh, duvets uh, extra uh, linen etc extra towels uh, this kind of thing now there is two things that I haven't got to at all yet um, I didn't mention in the beginning but this this van has also got a full shower and you're probably thinking okay well where is it where is it where is it well the only thing that gives it away is that that lever there um, and you're thinking to yourself what do you guys shower on your knees or on your bed no you'll understand in a moment what is pretty unique about this van but I'm just keeping you in a sense in suspense but at the same time I can only really reveal it once you've seen what the rest of the feature of the van is but I want you to notice that these cupboards actually do open like this and you won't really be able to see on the camera but there's places for pipes to be put in so I'll explain that in a moment and that will also those of you who are perceptive will remember that there were those two pipes that I pulled out there well that's going to make up my shower this is obviously my 250 volt point for my for my uh, 
to my kettle which comes there and the 250 volt is coming from here so the plug is there and the the beauty of this is that this is my light switches but this is also my inverter switch and uh, so th and that would be basically for an e external light which isn't working at this stage yet it's been wired up for that and of course we've got a 250 volt plug here which is for the tv and for give feeding power to the whole uh, uh, security uh, camera system uh, I think we can probably go to the back you'll notice that there's at this stage still just loose mosquito netting hanging um, that's still going to change that's going to become a little bit more permanent and look a little better but before we move away um, over here there's one thing that I, we've kind of stepped over every time but this is also a water point so if you want to make coffee in the morning You've got a little place for putting your cups once they're dirty. But in, I just opened it now because I want to show you that this is under full full pressure from those tanks. So this actually works. I've got 80 liters that I can work from. This obviously also feeds my shower. And at this stage, I'm busy still building a water point at the back for where the kitchen is that I'm going to show you in a moment. And obviously when we're not using this, it is stored over there. We've got a little hook here for our cups. Uh, what is going to happen next, as I've mentioned already, is that we're going to build a step that folds down. Okay, so now let me show you what we've done when it comes to kitchen. Um, my wife likes to cook, so she likes quite a, a nice space for kitchen. So our kitchen is stored under the bed. Everything is stored under the bed, but everything rolls out. So first of all, you've got the cooker. The cooker folds up. And it hooks like that, so that's your, your cooker space. Then, after that, and this is the part I haven't finished yet, but there will be a similar system. The water point is already here, but there will be a similar system on this door for a basin to be able to wash your dishes, etc. So, this is my kitchen. And you might think, well, okay, that doesn't look like much. Let me first start off by showing you the little cupboard space that we have. So, this is where our plates are. And our pots and pans are inside here. There's still space for glasses, etc. But we've got glasses inside, so we're not sure they're going to use it. This one's not really utilized at the moment. We've got a breadboard and an extra little basin if we want to do salads, etc. But this is now where the innovative part comes with the kitchen. There's a lever here. You pull the lever out, and the whole kitchen comes out. Now you'll remember on the other side, I said to you that the drawers are using about 40% of the space. This unit is also using about 40% of the space, which means that I've still got 20% there in the middle, which I'll show you how I've used it. Now, let's just spend a bit of time on the kitchen. Because this counter is a little small, uh, obviously not in relation to other camper vans, I know how much space those have got when you've got internal cooking. I've put it basically an extra counter there. But it's also got a little bit of spacking space there. So you've, in a sense, got two counters. You can put a couple of things inside here. Then we've got quite a lot of drawer space. Once again, you're going 900 millimeters deep. So you can really, you can really load it. This is for the smaller items. Things like, you know, aluminium foil. As you can see, there's a, there's a bit of stuff in there. As I said, we're not really packed for going at this stage. And this would normally be our food drawer. So we've got most of our food in here these bigger items like this would normally be because we don't use the toaster often so we'd normally keep it in one of the cupboards up there because we've got so much space uh, as you can notice my my mosquito net is kind of loose at the moment but you'll understand in a moment why because there's still a big feature that i haven't shown you on this van although i've kind of taken you all around apart from the shower obviously okay so first of all i want to speak about these fridges i've actually found it quite amazing that in Europe, you don't seem to find a lot of these kind of fridges. And if you do, they are terribly, terribly expensive. Fortunately, in South Africa, we're really spoiled with them. This is an excellent fridge when it comes to efficiency. I'm going to put it, I won't, I won't put it on now, but if I would put food in it and I switch it on and I'd say that the freezer compartment should have minus 6 degrees and the, or, or minus 10 degrees and the, the, the front compartment, which is the bigger compartment, should be at, let's say, 5 degrees then that will be like that working off the battery that I don't think it, it takes 20 minutes and the, and the fridge will be at that temperature and it will hold it there so much so that even if I'm parked in the shade my 100 watt uh, 
uh, solar panel and my two uh, 60 amp hour batteries keep this fridge going day and night. It is absolutely no problem and obviously then I've still got a lot of power. So that gives me that next stage. The kitchen works well. Um, we decided to put the fridge in this way because most people would say well why don't you put the the lid going the other way so you can reach but what we also realize is that if you want to reach deep into the fridge on this side you probably want to walk, walk this way around there but that's an option that you can obviously have and as I said this isn't finished the top isn't finished yet either because that needs to get the... so now what about that shower <laughs> well this is the intriguing part about this van is that it takes a little bit of time to, to, to organize it first of all I've got safety safety pipes in here because you'll see in a moment that the whole the whole bed frame actually is on rollers as well and this is just put here so that if you do a sudden stop that you don't land up with a bed on your back uh, in the front of the van so I first needed to remove that just to stop it from locking forward then it's got another little lock here which I just need to loosen and then you're going to notice what happens now if you notice there at the bottom there is the, the square tubing that you can see the holes on you would think why don't you put caps on that well the reason for this is this van also gets used for work it's not just a touring van so what happens in my workshop I have a frame that that is on 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 wheels like a like a like a shopping trolley and that frame is at exactly the same height as that and what happens is this whole bed right now has been loosened to the point that if you could catch it here the whole bed and the kitchen and everything excepting for the side cupboard actually come all the way out and rest on the frame which means that this van if you protect the, the, the cupboards on the sides with canvas can then be used for normal work so let me show you how it slides because when camping obviously this is a big feature because what happens now is that I can pull the whole bed out of course it's a little bit of a heavy contraption and some of you are already saying whoa this van must be really heavy well it's a three liter motor and in actual fact it gives you the most comfortable ride when it's in this position now this would be a normal camping position as I said I can pull this bed all the way out of the van but this would be just a normal cantilever position for for the bed at the moment I'm holding it a little bit because the van is a little bit forward now obviously at this stage I could climb on the bed I could pull out the kitchen but as you can imagine there's a lot of weight here at the back so there are two little pipes which have been mounted on the side of the bed here which you just take out and then you pop them in here like this tighten up tighten up it take I'm sure I, well I don't know if I should do it but uh, let me do it it takes a little bit of only a little bit of time so I'll do the same on the other side. This is only for safety's sake, so to speak, because the bed has actually got catching ball bearings on the bottom that makes it that I could pull it out. But because of the weight, and especially if you're going to sleep up top there in this mode, because this would be our outdoor sleeping mode. As you can see, what has happened with my mosquito net is that it's come out. You can see my pillows there. Obviously, I wouldn't be in cooking mode at that stage, so this would be folded up. And uh, in actual fact, it's really a nice place to sleep um, when it's warm and and when the or the birds kind of, kind of start singing in the morning, and you can actually wake up in that position. It's really awesome to watch a, a sunrise from that position. Obviously, in this stage, you can then still use the kitchen. So, in other words, one of you could be sleeping Sunday afternoon and uh, Rita my wife could still well I would be sleeping obviously my wife would then still be able to come and cook the stove is a little bit further away now but it still works fine the basin would work fine the fridge still works everything works but something extra has now happened that you might not have noticed you remember that 20% space here it is there if I lift this you'll notice that there's some more compartments here now in here comes all my awning poles in here this is a gazebo that we've put in here and there's actually another fold-up table which is in that position which uses that 20% space there's still one little space I haven't shown you but I'll show you that a little bit later 
and that's that one behind the toilet. You'll see in a moment how that works. You see, every little bit of space has been used in this van. And not just used in the sense of sticking a sleeping bag or whatever, but everything has actually been thought through in the sense of using the space. But now you're still wondering, what about that shower? How does that shower work? Well, a lot of people have said to me, you've got a great shower, but it takes a little bit of time to set up. Well, I'm not going to take my time setting it up this time, because otherwise I'm going to hold you for another 15 minutes. But that's how much it actually takes. I haven't really measured it, but I expect that it's 15 minutes or less for me to set up my shower. Now, that's quite a setup time. The only thing is, I always say to people, I've got all the time in the world when I'm, when I'm camping. So set, setting up a shower for 15 minutes, which is an item that I only use once in a while. We don't shower every day. I don't think is a problem and the fact that I'm going to get a meter by a half a meter shower out of the system says to me it's far better than any camper van shower that you could even dream of getting because as you know a camper van shower takes a lot of space and then they make it like a micro shower where in my case I'm quite tall and my arms are quite long there's no way I'd be able to shower so I hate those things but I'll show you how my shower works even though I've got very big feet, you'll note, you'll see that this works. Okay, so I'm going to fold up the bed now, but I'm going to do something different. I'm not just going to fold up the bed. I'm going to let it run all the way forward. Why? Because I want to set up my shower. So, and I want to tell you that it's possible for me to set up this shower in two ways. If I'm in camping mode, then obviously... I don't mind pulling out my bed. I'm not in stealth mode. I'm in a caravan park or I'm at some game lodge or something. Which means that I obviously could pull out this bed all the way to here and put it on stands. And then of course I've got all that space inside. And before I actually fold this up, I want the cameraman to go to the front so that you can see how this one meter that I've pulled out has already given me so much more space. But I want you to realize that I could pull this, van, this bed out another meter, which would give me all the space inside and obviously my bed would be then out here. But I'm saying that because I can use the shower in that mode, which would be the camping mode. But I can also use the shower in the stealth mode. So I'm going to set it up in a moment for the stealth mode. I'm not going to set it up for the camping mode because I'm sure you can use your imagination. So let's just go quickly to the front so that you can see the amount of space that I've gained. By, and if the camera just pulls a little bit back here, you'll see I, it's a meter, but of course my kitchen has come out two meters. So let's go and have a look what has happened on the inside of the van now that we've pulled the bed one meter back. One thing that has happened is that this toilet has obviously remained behind because it's not attached to the bed. But have a look at the space we have now. Now let's see what happens when I bring my table down, for instance. Now, we could sit four of us around this table and have a decent meal. Of course, I could get a bigger table, I could use one of my fold-up tables, put it here, and we could actually sit six of us, if, as long as other people bring their little chairs along, and we won't use those small ones. But this is a beautiful place now for us to have a chair on either side, if it's raining or whatever, and to actually set it up. Of course, I say if it's raining, and you're thinking about your beds outside, don't forget that there's tenting outside. So. In the rain, that bed is also protected at this stage, obviously not up. Um, just want to add a point of interest. Um, there was a bit of a challenge with this van. My prototype at first, the frames were up here, and then I realized that I needed the frames to go down so that it doesn't look terrible when the bed is in this mode. So you can see the frames on the bottom of those two black uh, pieces of metal, and that's what the whole bed rolls on. Now I want you to notice something, and you'll see this in a moment, but you see there's a little line in the floor there. Well, that's going to be my shower basin that is going to catch all the water. But you'll see that in a moment, because when I roll the bed forward, now as I said, if I wanted to, I could push the bed another meter forward backwards, put it on those same pipes, have them a meter backwards, and then I could set up my shower, which as I said to you early on, take note that these cupboards open, and you'll see in a moment I'm going to use those maybe we'll do another video for this but i'm going to show you how the shower sets up set up works but i want you to just be aware that i'm now going to push the bed forward but i'm going to push the bed further forward than when you saw it first in the in the van so first of all obviously to be able to do that 
I need to make sure that my chairs aren't in the way. I need to also make sure that my toilet isn't standing in the way. So these things can all sit here. Now I'm going to go to the back. We're going to release those poles. Now this is part of my 15 minute setup. Obviously, if I'm doing it in stealth, my bed wouldn't even be in this position. So I would have even less setup time. But because of the weight, once again, we need to make sure that the actual kitchen is in place. And then take out the pipes. For the sake of time, I'm not going to put these pipes back into place. You can imagine that's only like half a second's worth of work. So I'm just going to leave them here on the ground so that I don't waste your time. And I'm going to push the bed forward. Now I want you to notice this is the position you saw it in the first place. This is the position you saw it when you saw the kitchen for the first time. Now I'm busy pushing the bed all the way forward. And obviously it is now using up the space which is there in front. That's why I needed to get the chairs out of the way. As I've said, these mosquito nets are going to still have little retraction arms on them. At this stage, it's not complete yet. I'm just going to stick it up here for now. Okay, so what has happened? You remember that line that I showed you? Now all of a sudden I've got a cover here. I haven't showered for a long time, it seems. There you go. And you'll notice that that's a normal kitchen sink. And... Uh, you think, but yo, they you said a meter by a meter and a half shower. Well, the thing is that we realize is that I've, I've got big feet. I, I, I use size 13 shoes. Well, I want to tell you that my feet don't need much more space than this to actually shower in. The, the way I have a problem is here. I need space. And I want you to notice what has happened here. Because I've dropped, the ceiling is now higher. So I've got bigger volume. And... Um, I don't think I'm actually going to set it up for this. We'll, we'll do a complete setup on the on the actual shower uh, on a separate video, but I want to give you the idea. So I have those two pipes which you saw right in the beginning, and I put them from this cupboard to this cupboard, from there to there, from there to there. Those pipes slip in here. This thing is made with little magnets to hook on little metal places so that it actually pulls it out. The inner part, the bottom part of that's why it's actually bunching up like this, has got strong little magnets which actually hook in onto that's why there's a steel, a steel base in there. So the inner, and then you have this amazing zip which goes all the way from up top here, goes all the way down. I want you to see something. Something that you won't have in other vans. You've got an amazing space here to get dressed and undressed. This is why the floor doesn't have carpeting on. And you've got an amazing place to actually shower properly. Now, you say, yeah, well, you showed us the tap. But you see, everything is buried inside here. Everything is hooked up. And so what happens is once I've unhooked this, this is a special little aluminium wire that we use. And we hook up the shower onto the top of that pipe. So everything is covered. The cupboards are covered covered because it's running right around here so like i said it's a meter by a meter and a half on the top and it narrows down there a perfect shower now there's one thing else is that a lot of people say yeah but shower but what about hot water well we've solved that one too let me show you this cupboard looks like a normal cupboard and this is of course the charge point for when we sleep at night that's why it's kind of hanging around here but this cupboard actually comes off oh sorry i forgot the little latch on the inside just going to unhook it quickly. Okay, very good. This little cupboard comes off and hooks up on this side while you're showering. And this is a, those of you will know, this is a gas geyser. Oh, one of the little buttons is full now. Um, this, is a, this is a gas geyser, works off the gas. So I've got one gas bottle that feeds, the one propane bottle that feeds the, the, the stove outside and one that feeds this. Took me a long time to work out that this could be done because a lot of people say scary makes too much heat will burn the old van well in, i started this prototyping in europe when i was doing my sprinter van there and at that stage i pulled it right away out away far away from the wall and gave it so much space but eventually with prototyping i realized that this is more than enough for when you're doing just a normal shower 
obviously you have to be careful we switch off as you can see my gas tanks are now exposed so I can now switch off I can do everything I need as far as that's concerned so that's basically the shower it's a beautiful shower I'm down there I get hot water coming from there obviously that water is feeding all the way from my tanks we usually use uh, probably for a decent shower 20 liters each that's half of my tanks gone but it's so easy to fill up we have no problem so that's the shower setup and as I said to you this is the stealth mode we've actually used this in Europe the, the my European van has got the similar system slightly different but similar but the shower works on the same principles and there we've we've for instance showered right in the center of Bucharest 100 meters away from the metro station nobody even knew that we showered there because in stealth mode if your bed is out of the way you climb into one of the doors at the back, you get undressed, you shower, you get dressed, you dry yourself, you get dressed, you step out and all of a sudden there's this fresh person that steps out of the van which looked all dirty just before they actually stepped in. So that's kind of how everything works as far as the van is concerned. There's one more little thing I want to show you while we've got the bed in this mode is that as I said to you we've used every little bit of space um, and that is, I want you to notice, obviously I can still bring the bed a lot more forward to be able to use this space, but this is where we've got our barbecue thing. So just behind the toilet space is also a space where we would put our firewood, etc. There's one cupboard I didn't show you, and that is when the van is, or when the bed is halfway back, was that little cupboard next to the coffee stove. But that one is used where we keep our milk, etc. for the coffee. And I think that's about it. Um... There's quite a few things that I still would like to do with this van. As I said, I want to do the step. Um, we've actually prepared it to be motorized as far as the bed is concerned. So you, you saw me pushing it and all the rest of it. It has been prepared for that. I'm not sure when we'll be able to get to that. Um, there's probably small things that I would like to change. And like I said, there's gazebos that go all the way. And once again, I've had to make it that you can't see it. That there's actually gazebos that can be hooked up. Because those big awnings... Uh, that you put on the side of the stealth van that is supposed to be you know the normal awnings you get it's a dead giveaway um, if there was a way that I could get flexible flexible panels the little thin ones I would actually uh, solar panels I would push that on top oh there is one more thing that I want to quickly show you and that is the the waterworks and electric works uh, you're wondering where's my batteries where's where's my pump uh, all of that is buried behind the driver's seat um, you won't be able to see much here. I'm going to let the camera come in. Um, but here is where you have two batteries on top of each other. And then you have a water pump. You've got a, a, a pressurizer. And I can come with an outdoor pump and I can connect. I mean with a, with a pipe, that pipe that you saw in my cupboard. And I can connect it to a tap. I can do whatever. So I can have water coming in. As I said, I can pump water in. My inverter is here. I've also got a charger for if we on, we've got onshore power because my onshore power connects from here. If we've got onshore power, then I can charge my batteries if we happen to be standing very long in the shade. So that's about it. I'm not sure if the camera can really get in there, but that gives you a little bit of an idea of the waterworks, etc. I don't know if any of you will have questions about this van. I'm more than happy to help anybody. Uh, into doing some of these things. I'm sure that those of you who have built vans before will know that a lot of thought has gone into it because all the wiring and all the piping you can't see it. You can't see any of the hooks that hold the, the bed in place. You don't see the wheels that, that, that are that where the bed is rolling and as you can imagine that's quite a structure to move around. I think we're probably moving about I don't know 250 300 kilograms that ride with the bed, especially once all your clothes are in, once your, your equipment is in, all those drawers, all of that. So all of those hooks and all of those things had to be strong enough to handle an impact uh, should you, God forbid, should you have uh, some kind of accident. Um, but that's, that's, the, that's the thing. And as I said, for those of you who are thinking of going into van life, but you're thinking, why would I spend so much money on a vehicle like this that I might only use for a month or two a year? This solves the problem. You can actually use this van for transport. My son actually does use it. That's why we built it like this in South Africa. My son uses it for a little construction company that we're running. And so then we just put canvas to protect the cupboards and he can put whatever he wants. We put a false carpet over everything so that nothing gets damaged. And then the van gets used for work. Bless you.